Hey guys, happy Thursday. Today's Thursday, December 19th, 2019. I am super excited to be here with my friend, talented friend, I have to say, Alex Miner. Yeah, thank you. Um, I love the topic of this. I love his work. I can't wait for you guys to get to know him. Uh, so give us a thumbs up or a heart. Let us know you can hear us and see us. Uh, I don't know if you know that story. I did an entire show once where they couldn't hear me. And yet Ooh. people just watched. And nobody said anything. So it's the fashion. Uh, it's, it's the I mean, fashion. I, I'm like, but I have a large deaf contingency that follows the show, and they okay. can they read, read lips. lips. So that's hey, pretty cool. More power to them. I just kept talking, and then we had to reshoot the show. We had to do another show because mm. the guy that was an attorney talking about insurance, and it was during the hurricane. It was just insanity. Well, it might be good if like. One of those folks who could read lips was just like live typing. I know, typing. live typing me. <laughs> uh, so welcome to the show. We've got people on, obviously, so I would get it. Uh, Ted, we can't hear you. Uh, so you and you and I met through... Uh, Lorena Lareda. Costa yeah. and the LinkedIn Local Orlando Yeah, the event. LinkedIn Local. So, uh, okay, enough about that. Tell me about you. Okay, well, my name is Alex Miner. I run a company called I Am Media. And basically what that is, it's a video marketing agency. And the reason I say video marketing agency and not just marketing agency is because we are very specific in that we do video content for our clients. Now that may not be all that we do for our clients, but video is usually the main point because video by itself, as I'm sure Ted can attest, is one of the most effective ways to present yourself to the world these days. It's, it's the easiest way for people to get to know you in a timely fashion, to be able to catch your vibe, be able to catch your energy, and, and it's, it's just a great tool for communication because some of the problems with other forms of communication, like email or texting, is just that there's a big chance to be misunderstood. And while there's always a chance to be misunderstood, even when the words are coming from your own mouth, with <laughs> context it's clues true. like your body language and just the intonation, the way that you're saying things, um, humans are very good at putting all those little things together to really to get a better idea of the truth of you. Hey, Shelly, what's up? Hey, San all right, Diego. So, San Diego, she's awesome. All right, but but you obviously weren't born and then at two years old said, I want to own a video right. marketing digital media company. So tell them a little bit about you and your background. Okay, my background is pretty interesting. Uh, well, maybe not, but we're going to say it is for the sake of this. <laughs> we're going to say it is. Um, I'm from Maryland. Uh, I wasn't born in Maryland, but that's where I grew up. And my mom and dad were both in the Army. My dad was an Army uh, paratrooper slash chaplain and my mother was an army lawyer um, wow. we moved to maryland shortly after they got out of the army to be closer to family and i grew up you know as a preacher's kid wanting to be a rapper of all things <laughs> yes it makes total sense a rapper. preacher's kid wants to be a rapper yes let's go daddy was so impressed i bet dad um, was loving oh, that he hated it he so hated it um, and <laughs> And uh, through my adventures in trying to be a rapper of some Did type, you have a name? I'd rather not say. <laughs> eventually, eventually, I started going by my, my, my government name just because I had a friend who was like, Hey, doofus, your name's pretty cool. Drop that other stuff. And, and finally, I listened to him after years of him being like, Your name sucks. Your name sucks. Your name sucks. Um, and... And through those adventures of trying to be a musician, and I wasn't just a rapper, I was a music producer, I learned to do audio engineering. Um, I ended up going to school in Orlando uh, at a place called Full Sail. If, any of, you are, if any of you are familiar with Full Sail, it's basically a school that will teach you how to get your career started, whether that's in audio recording, um, live events, video games. Uh, now they've got entertainment business programs, film, it just, it's, a, it's basically if you want a career in entertainment, Full Sail is a place, and, and more, more the technical side of in for entertainment right. or the business side of entertainment, Full Sail is a good place to go to learn what you need to know to get started. Don't go there expecting them to hand you a career, no school hands you a career, unless you're like one of those Harvard trust fund <laughs> that got grandfathered <laughs> into the skulls and everything. Uh, you know, if you're one of those guys, yeah, maybe you'll get handed a career. But everybody else, you got to work for it. Worked for it. Hey, Shirley. Hey, Steve. What's up, Carlos? Everybody said good morning. Good morning. Uh, so you get, but you know what? Sometimes you, you're diving into it. You, uh, because how long ago was that that you went full sale? 
Ooh, it was, I got out of Full Sail towards the end of, I want to say 2004. So it's, so been it's a while. changed, right? So even oh, back so from there to now, more. all of the digital media has really exploded. Uh, so talk a little bit about what, what you learned there. And then just because you learn it, anybody who graduates with any kind of degree, uh, you're thankful to be in your uh, career. And then sometimes you're not thankful. So you right. obviously loved it. How did you develop it into a business of your own? Well, I actually didn't end up developing what I learned at face at not Facebook. We're on Facebook. Hi, Facebook. At, Facebook. Um, at Full Sail into a business. I mean, I sort of did because I after I got out of school, I was in a rap group uh, locally called Caveman Theory. I'm not ashamed for you to look that up. The music is still. We good. gotta find the other name though. We're on um, a mission. Well, if you find Caveman Theory, you'll find the, <laughs> the other name. Uh, but. Uh, so I was in a rap group and I was also recording and producing for some other acts locally. And so I got a little bit of money at, at, out of that, but you know, I didn't really recognize the value of what I was doing. So I was not priced appropriately and people are cheap. Um, <laughs> so I was working a full-time job. So. I was working a full-time job while I was doing all that. And Eventually, I wound up at Channel 13, which if you're familiar with Orlando, that's a local cable news station. 24 it's, hours. Yep, and I worked at Channel 13 for about three, three and a half years. And when I came to the end of my time there, I jumped into freelancing in the corporate events industry. During, corporate, during my time in corporate events, that's when I picked up a camera for the first time, a, a video camera for the first time, I should say, because I had done some photography, shot some concerts and things like that. And I really liked photography, but I didn't have the time to develop sure, that either. Sure. But doing corporate events, um, that and being a freelancer, that finally unchained me from the system. That's, I, love it. I, I had some freedom, I had flexibility. I, I wasn't exactly making my own schedule because you had to take the work when it came, sure. like with any business. Um, but I had a lot more choices and that was super valuable. Just being in that headspace, learning that there was another way than the go to school, get a degree, get a nine to five. Um, that was a lot. And, and the fact that nobody had taught me that or even, you know, hinted that that was really an option. You always heard the word freelancer being thrown right, around, but you right. never really knew what it meant. I don't know if anybody um, still knows what it means. I think it's I, so I think you don't unless you are one. Right. And most people become one by accident um, or they only do it to the extent that it's a side hustle or something that they do around their full time job. And, and until you're in it and you're a freelancer full time, like you really don't know what it means. Well, being a business owner is a challenge no matter what. I think people look at people who are consultants, freelancers, business owners, and think, oh my God, they've got it made. You're not answering to the man anymore. Right. Uh, and you but aren't. You aren't, but the, it comes with an a additional, price. a lot of responsibility. And a lot of people aren't born for that. They're born for nine to five, and that's mm -hmm. great. We need people like that. But if you have any kind of uh, desire to get out of that, you really have to accept the fact there's a lot to go with it. It's not just a yeah. million dollars your first month out. Oh, my first month out, I was I was hurt. Were you? Because I made the mistake when I left Channel 13, because I started freelancing on the side, and after like kind of figuring out how the corporate events thing worked, being a freelancer for that, getting my name on the list of a few different production companies, um, I made the decision to, to jump ship, but I didn't have the experience of knowing when the ebbs and flows were sure. in the Orlando area, and I made the mistake of quitting my job the week before Easter. Oh. So the very next week when I'm like, I'm free, <laughs> then it's like, you're bro, because there was no work. You didn't have any planning involved in that leap. I, I got pissed off when I left. <laughs> you left. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people get that way. They get to their, their end of their rope and they're like, whatever. Yeah. We try to encourage people, you hindsight, right? We try to encourage people to have a plan, to have, a plan have have funds because you do want to have something in savings because when you get out there, just because you say I'm Alex Miner or Ted Bogert and you loved me before at this place, you should love me now and now pay me money. Right. Uh, it's completely different. I think business people who make that leap into business ownership don't realize that it doesn't necessarily convert immediately. Right. I, I think the biggest mistake with business ownership in general is people have, and maybe it's because of the movies or whatever, but people get this thing in their mind like, if you build it, they will come. Right. No, when you first build it, 
Nobody knows, nobody cares. And so you have to market yourself, you have to put yourself out there, you have to be proactive, you have to hunt. Um, and the yes. thing is, most people don't want to hunt. They expect that if they open up shop, especially if it's a brick and mortar location, that people are just going to run in the door because what they have is so great or the service they offer is so good. Uh, but the case, but the but the reality is, if nobody knows that you opened up shop, if nobody knows that the product you have is great, if you have no proof, right. then then nobody's going to buy, mostly because they're ignorant of the fact that you exist. Well, t tell them about that, because I want to talk about your, your industry as a whole, video marketing, content creation, uh, digital marketing, whatever word you want to use for it. There's so many mm -hmm. buzzwords out there for right. kind of the same thing. It feels like there's a lot of people out there who say they are a professional. Yep. Um, I feel like there is, we're inundated with people who say that they can do what you do. And what I've fed my experience is they can't. So how, how, do, how do you create it so that um, you can put yourself above those people who are not really in it? Because people get hired, I see it all the time, I have people say, gosh, I wish I would have hired, not hired this person because they don't know how to do the videos. I'm going in behind and cleaning it up. Uh, they don't know how to post content. Their their grammar is terrible. I mean, mm -hmm. isn't there spell check and word check all these days? Uh, it's just that kind of stuff. And they're they're fighting it all the time. Yeah. And then they get disgusted with it and say, I don't trust anybody who's in your industry. Right. Uh, well, content marketing, digital media, social media, in general, it's kind of it's kind of like the music industry. And which is easy for me to relate to because I was kind of in the music industry and there are different levels to it so when qualifying professionals you kind of gotta do your homework um, with the different platforms you as a consumer as a potential client uh, should know enough about the platforms that you are wanting to hire somebody to manage or to create content for that you can tell if they're doing a decent job uh, and now it's a crapshoot. Everything's a crapshoot, no matter what. Like even when you go buy the most expensive car at the most of the most prestigious brand, it's a crapshoot because you might have gotten the one dud that came off the line that day. <laughs> so you could, you know, drive off the lot and the engine fall out. So you're gonna have to test the waters, um, which is why I say for people who are jumping into having their social media managed or getting content made, start with something small. Don't start with a gigantic campaign. Have them do like one thing, see how it works, and if it came out how you want it or hopefully better than you want it, then continue. That's actually a great point because I think people get so overwhelmed with their social media. They just want to say, here, handle all of it. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of the problems come in because one project at a time is a great way, that's a great point, Alex, to monitor it, figure out if it's the right fit for you because maybe they're excellent at it, but it's not a right fit for you. Right. It doesn't make sense for you. It's very hard for people like Alex. Well, it's probably easy for him, but I think in general, it's hard to get into somebody else's voice. You've got a voice and an opinion and how you want things done and you want it to sound like it's coming from you. And you have to get with somebody who's talented enough to be able to figure that out and become your voice in that arena. Right, because and, and one of the things that I, I try to communicate to people, and sometimes it's difficult, is when people come to me or meet somebody like me, um, a lot of times what they see is videographer. Right. And videographer is the guy that comes in with a camera, points, shoots exactly what you tell them, and tries to make it pretty, and turns it over to you as quickly as possible so you can get on to the next job. Me, I am more of a video marketing strategist, or a filmmaker slash digital marketer, uh, and, and the reason I say that is because, yes, I can come in, I can point the camera at you, I can shoot exactly what you want and give you a pretty picture and then walk away, if that's what you want. I don't prefer to work that way. Right. I ask questions. The first thing that I do when I have a client is, it's, is questions, conversations, trying to find out about them, about their company, about their mission, about their voice, like you said, about what they care about, because I can't properly document it if I don't know what's going on. So I'll ask you about details of your company. I'll ask you about what your price points are, what your market is, who your, who your client avatar or your ideal customer is, because all those things matter. Because if I'm making a video for that particular audience, I need to know, number one, who that audio who that audience is, and number two, I need to know what it is that you want them to do. Because 
most videos should have a call to action of some kind because it's all great if you make a, a good looking video and put it out there but what's the point if you don't if it's not supposed to make somebody do something so the call to, to make action is so important and I'm learning that so this is one of the things I'm working on and so I think a lot of people out there are the same they think if they put their video up again you you put it out they'll come and so it just because you put the video out there doesn't mean automatically your phone's gonna start to ring. Mm -hmm. You have to have a call to action. So tell them what that means. Like give them an example of what's a call to action. How, so, do, you, how do you get them to, to come back to you? How do you get them to interact with you? Well, basically you have to tell them. Like you can't assume that people are mind readers. Like yes, you make a video, you have your two minute, three minute presentation or blurb or you know commercial or whatever it is. But if the whole point of that thing is to get them to make a phone call, tell them to make the phone call and give them the phone number. Right. Um, if it's a Facebook ad that contains that video, then have a call now, tell them to make the phone call and have a call now button as part of the ad. Uh, you know, if the goal is to get them to go to a page and fill out a form to get on your email list, like say, Go here, say go, click this button, go here, fill out the form, and we'll be in touch. Like, you, you have to tell people what to do, and it's not because people are, it's not because people aren't intelligent, it's because a lot of times you're not giving people enough information to go on, and the, you should ideally be telling them to do one concrete thing because if you tell them one specific thing to do, they're more likely to actually take action. If you give them a ton of options, then the like, all, in all likelihood, they'll do nothing because analysis paralysis is real. And, it, true. and you know, when you make it more complicated, people take more time to think about it instead of being like, all right, I can do that one thing, let's go. I love it. All right, so what's your, I, I, I like to ask people who are in this industry a couple of fun questions because for me, I don't know the answer. I do Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. My kids tell me that's for old people. Um, so I know Instagram has uh, a format, IGTV, and you can do quicker things. It's not as long as like a show here, mm -hmm. but you can do videos there. What, what do you think is the most impactful? Uh, it does depend on the audience, social media platform, like which? It really does depend on the audience because the thing you gotta understand, um, you have to make your content contextual. Um, and that's another buzzword that's out there. Tell me what that means. It, it means you have to think about where you're putting it and who's where you're putting it. So Instagram is kind of for the, I would say, 18 to 35 year old market, uh, mainly. Every, like, there are tons of people on Instagram, so that's just a general statement. That is kind of like 18 to 35, but that's kind of like the the main range of right. the people who are actively using Instagram. Not just having an Instagram and then never putting in anything on it. I'm talking about people who are active users. Um, Snapchat, TikTok is pretty much, well, in Snapchat, people are kind of in that same age range are active on Snapchat, although I kind of think Snapchat is starting to go down. TikTok is for the chillings, but. What is TikTok? Just. TikTok, it's, it used to be called Musically, and they changed the name to TikTok, and it's basically, it's, all right, you, do you remember Vine? I remember it, yes. Vine was this platform where it was short videos and a lot of what happened was a lot of content creators that were like comedic or funny, like they they monopolized Vine and that was kind of like where you went to see funny stuff. Well, TikTok is kind of like the same thing but with music in the background and it's mostly oh. kids who are, who are on, like you see a lot of people dancing on yeah. it. And a lot of people think TikTok is just for kids, but I would say if you have the time or if, you, if you're if you wise enough to make the investment of time, get on TikTok. And, and I'm saying this to myself too, because I'm not on TikTok I'm yet, not on it. And I know I need to be on TikTok, if only to learn how the platform functions. Right. I mean, I, I do have the app on my phone. I just haven't made anything yet. I'm still observing. Um, just, just because there's going to be another app down the road that is similar or right. takes things from TikTok. And if you have the knowledge of how that initial platform worked, you'll be better equipped to use the platforms that come after it. What, is some, what do you say to somebody who, like let's say you're in my age group and mm -hmm. you've got a business, you want to do, you have social media could be very impactful for you, uh, but you don't know about anything but Facebook. Okay. Um, do you try to, as, as their, 
I think you're the mentor, you're the consultant, you're the therapist, you're the bartender to your clients, right? People have to be able to conf uh, confide in you and tell you what they've got going on in order for you to do your best job. So yeah. what would you tell somebody who only knows that? Should they stick where they're at, what they know? Or do you say, all right, you haven't done Instagram, I think your particular platform would be great on there, and then try to take them through it? Uh, well, I'm not a social media manager, so I, I'm not gonna hold your hand and walk you through the whole process. I will give you some high level advice and strategy, um, but then I would recommend you get an actual social media manager to help you develop your presence on those platforms. Because especially if you know that you need to be on a platform, but you're weak in that platform, hire a professional. Like there's no shame in hiring a professional. Like people who go to the gym and know that they don't know what they're doing in the gym right. will hire a trainer. At least some people will hire a trainer. I've never <laughs> hired a trainer. I know, well, I mean, that's why I'm fat. That's but <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, people who are smart or are wise and know they want to be in the gym and get results, they hire a trainer because that person knows more about the human body and what exercises will work for their body type, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing when it comes to social media. If you know you need to be someplace, or, or it's like going to a mechanic. You know you don't know how to change that thingamabob in the engine. Why would you ruin your car trying? Because I think like, people believe that they hear the pricing, right? And they go, I need somebody to manage my social media. I need somebody to help me create content. And they can't do it or they wouldn't have the need. Uh, and so they go to somebody and they go, whoa, you want to charge what? Two cents an hour? I know it's much more than that, but that's my thought process is you you know you can't do it yourself. Why would you not hire a professional when you know it's, you do it for every other thing in your business? And yet people are hesitant to do that because they think it's social media, it's free. Why is it costing me to do it? Okay, that's, that's the sticking point, is that people get caught up in this notion that social media is free. And social media is free if you are a casual user. Right. If you are a business, Social media should be an investment. And here's why I say that. All right, everybody out there in Facebook land watching, raise your hand if you still watch TV, live TV. Right. I don't know. Yeah, who I, does. Don't, I don't see any hands raising. I don't know anybody. So, and if you do watch TV, how often do you actually pay attention to the commercials? Right. I, I, don't, I don't see no hands. No. Nope. So, what that means is all these industries that think that TV commercials are still the way to go are wasting, and I'm not saying wasting completely because there is there are people who still watch TV, that sure. there is some residual benefit to doing that, but the amount of money you spend versus people who actually see your commercials that are actually interested in the products that you have or services is a minuscule percentage. The thing about social media is when you do targeted social media campaigns, they are exactly that, targeted. You won't waste time showing your ads in your uh, projects and campaigns to people who have no remote interest in what it is that you do or the services that you Correct. offer. There are tools on those platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Google, that are made to only target people who have expressed certain characteristics or certain interests in the things that you are promoting. And, and, and to learn how to do that properly, you either need a bunch of time to invest or you need to hire somebody who's invested that time. So I always tell people, when they're when they say that when they say well how do they get all that targeted information it seems like BS hey guys you know all those surveys if I were a tree what kind of tree <laughs> would I be or um, what character would you be in Game of Thrones they're collecting your data on everything you do on social media and then they're putting it into a giant social media database especially Facebook and they are utilizing that to create these lists they look at your shopping online they look at uh, if you go to Facebook watch uh, what things you're watching yeah. they know because you're providing them the information so don't get all big brother on me let's just accept it as the fact right now right. so that's how they get and it. the thing is since social media became so prevalent in our society people are just giving away their info um, everybody gets uptight about privacy laws this and that the thing is most of y'all are just putting it out there yeah. and especially if you're on Facebook if you're on Instagram if you're on Google those computers are keeping track of everything that people do now me as a marketer I can't see all that actual data right. I have no access to it that's where the privacy laws and policies and all that stuff comes into effect even the people who run the systems can't see all the data right. what it is is they've developed these programs algorithms 
that's another, that's another it's a big buzzword. buzzword. Yeah, it sounds the, so important. The, the algorithms and all those things, basically computer learning and intelligence that can analyze all that data because it's too much for any one person. They, when you input the characteristics and things that you're looking for, those programs, those algorithms, they can sift through all that data based on the targeting that you've provided and say, all right, I can find this many people that fit your criteria. What you want me to do? And then you tell them what you want it to do, and then it goes and to it work. does it. All right, this is how fast it goes. We're gonna share all of Alex's contact information, how you can reach out to him. Don't you want somebody like this in your corner? I love his work. I have personally seen it and experienced it and been on the other, this side of the camera while he's on that side of the camera. Uh, and he's phenomenal and he really does listen to you. So definitely reach out to him and we'll share, we'll tag his business profile too and we'll, we'll get you the information, reach out. Uh, you know, we're big on Ted's show and Ted's community for mentors. So can you give a shout out to one or two of the mentors, maybe somebody who's helped you along the way, changed your life maybe? Um, I would say, okay, three of the biggest uh, it's my my homie verse that I met in college uh, when I was still heavy into producing and rapping and all that stuff verse kind of like completely changed the direction of my music um, so verse thank you for that you're amazing your music is amazing and and I, I love everything that you taught me uh, on the professional side uh, Marcus Rideout and Nick Koyama, uh, they're, they're the heads of kind of like this movement called Video Warrior. It's kind of a, a mastermind for, for uh, videographers and filmmakers who actually want to focus on how to do business and how to grow their businesses. And without them, I probably would not be sitting here today. Awesome. All right. Thanks for being on, brother. Appreciate you. He's talented, guys. Reach out to Alex Miner. Thanks for being on the show. We'll be back later. Mwah.